fearless pioneer. Yo, what is going on guys? EJ here, bringing another Lord of the Rings Rise to War video. Today guys, I'm still in Bag End for another 5 days, and as you probably may know, as a content creator, this is very hard to create content at the moment. Um, I'm not able to do any crate opens or anything at the moment, um, for certain circumstances and stuff like that. So, I've come up with uh, some ideas for a 2 series video that we're going to be doing today. Um, so I thought, so when you go into your commanders here, you can go in and have a look at the recommended builds as we can see here. And we're going to be going through every commander for the good side today. Um, followed off in about 2-3 to three days after this um, video, we'll be doing all the evil um, commanders. And we're going to be basically just looking at the highest recommend build and just reacting to it and seeing how crazy they are. So as you can see, we're going to start off right now with Gandalf the White, and we're just going to work our way down the list. So as you can see, we've got it set at Gandalf the White there. Campaign, R5+, plus, 40+, plus, and Trending. So the highest one, we're going to go to the top left here. So it's going to be this Gandalf the White from Lonely here. Um, so he has complete all golds, which is absolutely insane. Um, he's using a troop combination with no T4 in it, so he's probably not... Um, in a faction which has a tier 4 unit or is playing like a season such as like non-RP which can use like war chariots and stuff like that in the mix and have tier 4s but he's using a tier 3 which looks like he's gone with a range kind of build and using all pure gold which is crazy um, he's got resistance there which is perfect tranquility yeah um, he do, okay he's got the the extra healing here he doesn't have the fearless cavalry and yeah as you can see he is r25 absolutely insane and he's gone with the full mounted build pretty wild um oh we can just do it for this so we'll just do it this way all right let's go with aragon next so the highest trending aragon at the moment um we can see the name there lol um is a respect 20 aragon um and he is using a quite interesting build with all gold he is using a dawn with lethal weapon which is increasing damage there nothing too crazy and okay each round a chance to gain madness immunity um so he's gone with the madness immunity stacked with um the skill wherever it's hiding here um right here for stun so he's gonna have stun and madness immunity and it just looks like he's probably done this um in the red book or something because he doesn't have the full troop unit build set up there but yeah quite interesting um to say the least yeah he's going with the madness and stun immunity build there all right so let's go look at thorundil is there some crazy ones here there is so it looks like we've got one here at respect level 15 guys over 100 plus likes wow okay very interesting could thorundil be good if you spend thousands on him um, so it looks like we've got a Noldor sword here with Mind Split. And then we have the Mirkwood Mail, which is his um, R10 equipment, which uh, Elb units damage received minus 9% when battling on wood producing land. Um, I think these stats are good, but yeah, overall the skills and that item I don't like that much. Uh, last Resort, okay, extra damage, interesting. Um, and then we're using Heroism for some extra HP buffs. Um... He's gone with a full stack of the Heralds. Very interesting. And then just two other units there. Um, and it looks like we have units. He's just gone for a lot of the um, damage dealing and then damage reduction. Okay, quite interesting there. All right, King of the Dead. Let's have a look. Okay, so we have um, a few trending here at the moment. We do, As you can see, we do have an R25 over here, but... We're going with the top trending at the moment. What is the hottest of the hot? And it looks like we have an R10, level 46 King of the Dead, um, which has, um, ooh, okay. So it has an Obsidian Dagger with Resurrection. Very nice. Okay, that's fully max refined. Um, very smart to be using um, burn damage as well because we know, like, you're going to be using all of the Oathbreakers on there and they're very susceptible to, like, burn and focus damage. Cask of the Pride, very interesting there with melee suppression. Let's say so damage reduction because they are a melee unit. And then he definitely has played non roleplay before using the drums of Baradura. Um, yeah, quite an interesting build there. 
And the skilling, I'm definitely guessing he's going to have it in the recovery areas as well. Yes, he does. Okay, very nice. Okay, Dane, this is going to be interesting. Okay, so we have JKH here um, with the top trending at the moment. And it is, of course, an R25 Dane. Let me guess, cleave on it? Yes, so we have a max cleave, axe of Kazakh Doom, and then the max Durin's plate. We then have the Helm of the Mountain, which is his R10 equipment, so you must have him R10. That's going to take a lot of mithril. Um, we're, yeah, this is really good. As you can see, it's it 54 might, uh, 30 extra defense with the walls. That's going to stack a lot. Um, but the crazy thing you can see, he has 561 might. Um, it looks like he'd probably go with the full stack method, but yeah, he doesn't have the full unit set. And the skilling is just absolutely crazy. And he's also got an end draft there with Gift of Nature. Wouldn't like to bump into him. Very crazy. Moving on to the next one, guys. We're going to be checking out AME here. So the top trending here at the moment is a Respect 16 AME, which um, is running his R10 sword here, like the wind, which is really good. Um... Surprisingly, he's I've seen his speed a lot higher than this, like up into the 400s. It looks like he's plays non roleplay because he does use some raiders here in his troop composition. But as for the gear, everything's um in the right place. Um, he doesn't have um the best skill here, but second win is still quite nice, and the skilling is looking quite good in the correct areas. Alright, after Amy here, it looks like we have another uh, tier 3 commander. It's going to be Galadriel. The top trending at the moment is from King Stelios here with a Respect 20 Galadriel. And it is, yeah, insane. 529 focus, guys. Um, gone with the full stack of guard Guardmen, which we all know about. Um, and, okay, Bow of the High um, Elves is very interesting. That comes with Mind Split. I didn't know that. So, usually you'll see Noldor spirit, um, split swords here. So, yeah, that basically works in the same aspect. Um, then the Elven Cloak is a beautiful one with resistance. We have a Swan Helm there with Courage. So, it's going to increase her commander damage. Absolutely perfect there. And with the men, extra defense. And then probably Critical Care. No? Okay. It's with Heroism, which is still really good. Um, but yeah, crazy. If that had critical care, probably be the best build you could possibly ever build. But overall, that is absolutely insane. I wouldn't like to bump into her without an absolute doubt. Arwen, someone who I am currently trying to level up. It looks like the highest one we've got at the moment is Oscar the Grouch. Okay, with a respect 18 Arwen. Okay, so here, okay, so we're just talking about this using the implication of the Noldor Sword with Mind Split. Um, we do have the Elven Cloak with Resistance, so as you can see, we are seeing a little bit of a trend here with certain, like, really good focus on um, damage commanders. We have the, uh, Ancient Numorian Helm here with Tranquility, which we all know is fantastic. It's going to stack with her amazing healing abilities. And then we have her ring here with Mortal Bond as well. Also, skilled in the correct areas, basically, there's so, so much healing abilities and that, and it's crazy. Um, her troop combination, I haven't dabbled with her a lot, but this is a very interesting troop combination. Um, it looks like we're going with some, uh, definitely, a little bit of a base infantry there with some ranged and attack from there, as well as the extra HP and defense buffs from the Catters. Okay, so it's an interesting build there. After Armour, we have Boromir, and it looks like we have Urkan here. With the highest trending at the moment with a Respect 17 Boromir. Okay, so it looks like he's using Men's Strength on a Carver here. So this is a li little bit more toned down with Purple Gear. He's using a full, okay, mounted unit. But it's all melee, which makes sense. Because um, we do know with his skills that um, we're going to be working really good with melee units and stuff like that. And increasing all their damage. It's going to be very good. Um, so yeah, he's using melee vigor there, very nice. Mounted vigor makes sense, and yeah, all manish units. So yeah, that is definitely a good combination, and yeah, and not a bad Boromir whatsoever. Okay, next guys, it looks like we're going to have a R20 from 
mule dib here, R20 Legless. Let's have a look. Okay, very interesting. We do know that Legless works very good with Dwarves and Elves, so it doesn't have the fullest um, troop combination here, but it looks like he is going with a mix of the Keepers and then Guardians are going to be doing the defense. We have his R10 here with Bow of the Gladroom, which is very good. Um, we all then also have Duran's Plate, which is very interesting, which is really good. He's obviously because it's going to be doing buffs for the Dwarves, but also increasing his might at 434. That is a savagely really good Legolas. So yeah, he's definitely buffing those Dwarf units um, as well, but they also is going to be helping the Dwarves. Sorry, the Elves a little bit as well. Definitely will be double helping the Dwarves without a doubt. And the skilling at R20, you can't go wrong. He's got the points everywhere, just doing a ton of physical damage and poison damage, for example. Moving on, we've still got quite a few to go here, guys. This could be a long video today. We have Gimli. We'll try to speed it up a little bit. So, Happy Gilmore here. Nice. With an R23 Gimli. Um, as you can see, he has the R10 Barlin's Axe, which is really good. We all know about how strong that is. All the gear is particularly very nice. Um, the troop build here is very interesting. It looks like he's using a little bit of the shield barriers as well, which is really good because um, you don't have to use as many of these and they're a little bit quicker. So that's quite an interesting combination there. And all the gear is in the perfect combination with 504 might and the skilling is looking very nice there, guys. All right, let's go on to Faramir. Very nice. We have a trending Faramir here at the moment from Sugar Daddy at R18. Um, and this is looking very similar to mine. Definitely plays non-roleplay with a mixture. It looks like he's using the Swans for extra defense early in the round. And then, of course, these guys, we don't need to talk too much about them. They're insane. And then the Sharpshooters. Uh, the gear with ranged mine, pretty much exactly what I use. Is using the Ranger's Cape at the exact same level that I have at the moment. Trapper's Hood, perfect, the same thing I'd use. And then, okay, he's using Hunter's Mark, which is interesting. There is other combinations you can use here, um, which can increase the amount of damage that your range is going to be doing. But yeah, Pursuit, can, this can be really good when helpful when going up against, um, you know, the man. The good old Gilgalad, he's very strong. So yeah, this is a very good counter for him. Not a bad Faramir whatsoever, looking very nice. Elrond, okay. Um, it looks like we possibly have like a Chinese name here, so I can't pronounce that one for us guys But the top trending here is an R15 Elrond um, We do have his R10 here with the Hatterfang, which is a very good with the Throng Cleaver um, Then moving on with a lot of similar gear that we've been seeing on the Elf units with the Elven Cloak The Silver Harp of Rivendell, which is really good with Might of Elves Troop combination looks perfectly good to me um, and the skill points are looking pretty good. He's definitely, um, he doesn't have the points in the, does he have it? Oh, he does have it in conveyor. Yeah, so skilling's looking quite nicely there as well. Dwalin, we just recently did a video of him. Shogun is the highest one here, guys, at R25, which is quite interesting. Um, so with the skilling, um, it looks like when he did this skilling, he was taking advantage of double rise up at the time with a single stack. Um, he does have the full refined twin axes and then I would call this um, Purple gear mediocre like anyone can pretty much achieve this now Especially if you've been playing as long as I have but the skill points are definitely in the perfect position The one thing is um, people told me that you should be fully maxing out Longbeard So I'd probably change max out Longbeard and probably take some points out of hunt down guys But yeah, very nice to one in there R25 of course Okay, Gilgalad, R25, Lonely up here again. Lonely up here again, guys. Um, so he must be a Mega Whale because he's got another R25 Tier 3 here. Absolutely crazy. I don't think you'll be wanting to bump into this Gilgalad anytime soon, guys. With the Elven White Knife, <laughs> yeah. Mind, yep, yeah, Tactical Maneuvers, Damage Reduction, Agius. I don't think... Too much more needs to be said about this, guys. This Gilgalad is absolutely insane. Yeah, and at R25, he's going to be absolutely destroying everyone, pretty much. We still have a lot to go. Oh, my days. All right, Gandalf the Grey, guys. 
21 here. Um, respect level from Axel. Looks like we are using a... We're going with a range, kind of a range build with him, which is very nice. 416 focus. The skilling looks very nice. We're going to be doing some madness, I'm guessing. Yes. Uh, tactical maneuvers. Yep. And we are also using his wizard smoking pipe. Okay, very interesting. And he's using the three different races to work with that perfectly. Moving on next, we've got King Aragon, guys. Um, so, Maestro, I definitely know that guy. Um, so, he's using a R20 King Aragon here, 453 might, using the beautiful Endura, which is amazing. Um, focus damage reduction, I'm guessing. Yes. Um, Discord, or probably, okay, no, last resort there. And then the HP buffs with Gift of Nature. Going with the full stack of the Guardman, which is really good. And yeah, everything's looking really good with the skilling wise there. Very strong. Aragon, King of Men. Who we got next? Okay, Thayden. Let's see. R25 from the light guys. Okay, so he doesn't have the unique, but he's using the Reach of the Ritter Mark. Um, he has Might of Cavalry, which is very good. There's also another one here. I can't remember what it's called, but it's crazy. Um, basically, you can get initiative and stuff like that. And, and extra certain things, which is really good. I think you have the chance for follow-up as well. Um, but Might of Cavalry, very nice. Um, Might of Cavalry there, so no Fearless um, Cavalry. Uh, Agius, very good. And then Shroud, definitely going to be using Bow Knights. Yeah, very strong build. Can't say anything bad about this. R25, absolute crazy build on Theoden. Marion Pippin, this could be interesting. So the highest one we've got here is from Chicken at R10. I think my Marion Pippin at R11 does have the Barrow Blade, which is very interesting. Um, maybe Shroud on this, yes. You can tell I've got a little bit of experience now. I can pretty much tell you this may have uh, Hysteria, yep. Um, and then probably Mend, makes sense. Okay, and it looks like his kind of troop combination, he would have been using Ents, Shy Protectors and that, I do agree with that without an absolute doubt, because some of his skills here, for example, Hobbits and Men Damage Received. So yeah, that's going to work quite nicely. Very interesting there. Moving on with the other guys, we have the highest training at the moment of Frodo and Sam, a level 40 at R10. Does have the Unique, which I think is insanely good, guys. Um, so as you can see, this has the chance to evade all damage when the enemy units include Orcs. The troop um, combination is very interesting. It looks like we're going with all manish units, which um, makes sense as well, because they do have Hobbit Adventure as well. Um, yeah, sustain for healing. Okay, very interesting. This is definitely not the best um, here. So, But yeah, it's just a mixture. But yeah, it's cool to see that someone has their unique sword, guys. We're getting there. Okay, Radagast. I'm very interested to see here. So... The highest at the moment is actually a Radagast at R5. I, I, I have a really good Radagast myself. Frenzy? No. Okay, Giant's Power. Okay, unit attack for large units. Makes sense. Because that's going to work really good with the Beast. Um, it looks like they're going to be going with the Eagle Beast Healing route with this build. Um, definitely, it looks like they're going with the Maximum Healing. Makes complete and absolute sense there with the Beast Healing. And then the other gear is, it's just, it's alright. It's just to help um, buff the amount of focus that he's doing, um, which is really good for healing. But yeah, overall, not too bad. 50 thumbs up on that one from Lexavan. We're getting there, guys. Next, we have Eowyn. Now, it looks like we have from Pyramon here an R25 Eowyn, um, which is looking quite interesting. Cutlass with Melee Might. Um, we have Focus Protection right there. And then we have a Horseman's Helm with Revolve. Resolve, sorry. And then we have Rohan's Refuge, which we know is very good. Um, and then using a full mounted unit, very good setup. Makes complete sense there. The skilling is looking completely really good. Yep, going with the Shield Maid. Maiden route. And at R25, you cannot go wrong there whatsoever from Pyram in there. Okay, let's have a look at a Howdy here, shall we, guys? So, okay, one of my fellow members from um, my fellowships and factions and everything like that, Neil, one of my good old Gorilla Brothers from the 13, is looking really nice here with his R25 Howdy. 
He's look going very nicely with the Merc with Bow with the ranged might. Using Ranger Shroud with Resistance. And then we have Agius right here. And then probably Gifted Nature. Makes perfect sense. Very interesting gears, um, gearing here. It looks like he's um, throwing these guys in for the extra range damage. Which is very nice. Not just using all of the Elven units for once. 352 might. Very nice to see there on how dear. Yeah, and Skilling's looking beautiful. It's all in the correct sections. Very nice. Yeah. He's going to be very nice this season, um, without a doubt, that's for sure. Moving on, guys, we have Denethor. This is going to be interesting. So, um, Trisusus here. I'll probably pronounce that wrong. I'm very sorry. Um, highest trending here at R17 Denethor. Very, wow. Okay, this is interesting. Let's have a look. So, he's going with the full stack of Guardmen, which is makes sense without an absolute doubt i know with the skilling and stuff he is very good with manish units guys as we can quickly just click through here and you can see he can do some burn damage and focus so the carver with men strength interesting the plate of the citadel with fortitude of men okay men vigor and then he's got his goblet of the first steward which of course with the guard of the tower it's going to do damage reduction for them as well as a massive hp buff for men as well very interesting 416 focus I would love to see some battle reports of Denethor. It could be very interesting. Balin. All right, we've got one for Mammoth here. I'm probably going to call Retaliate on a Matok straight away. No. Okay. This is a very weird, interesting build. Okay. Nearly 400 might there. The full stack makes sense. So he's going with the Lang, the Lang, but it does have Retaliate. So that, okay, that makes sense there. Okay. I didn't know that had that combination. So that's a very interesting combination there. Um, he obviously probably doesn't have the Iron of the Matok. Um, Durin's Plate makes sense. Cask makes complete sense. And yeah, Erebor's Pride. The Skilling is looking very nice. He has quite very good healing. And of course, he has non-stop healing as well. Basically, he's going to stop the enemy commander from being able to do healing. Yeah, and then he's got the same sort of skills as the other Dwarven units. Like, for example, Dwalin. Looking very nice. Yeah, yeah. But that... Um, Sword there, definitely the Leng took me by surprise. All right, moving on, guys. This is a long video, sorry. Um, we have an Ori here. Um, BNK top at an R18 Ori. Using his, nice, his slingshot here at full refined here. So, preparation for allied ranged dwarves. Each unit's 100% chance to cause maximum damage. Very nice there, using... The same kind of gear that you were using on the Dwarves, and we have Mend here for some extra healing. Looks like he's gone the Musician route with some uh, extra healing, which is quite interesting. Of course, we're going with the Commander damage, as well as the Army physical damage. They're all pretty much got the same sort of skills there as Dwar Lin. And yeah, makes sense that he will be using the Master Throwers there with that build, guys. Yeah, not a bad looking Ori whatsoever. Very interesting. All right, we're getting there, guys. Next. All right, let's have a look at Hergon. Let's see what they've done here. Nothing too special. We can quickly go um, through this. Um, has his red arrow, which is quite interesting. How dear is not that good in PvP. So I'm not going to dwindle too much on him. But we have an R15. Looks like he's got the same kind of skills as um, Boromir and stuff like that. But yeah. Um... For me, he's just a siege but it's interesting to see that someone does have his red arrow. Very interesting. Right. Thorin, let's have a look. Oh, my days. An R25. This is going to be crazy, guys. R25 Thorin. We have Fury on the Matok of the Iron Hills. 420-something might. We probably have Agius here. Okay. Um, complete and absolute crazy build here it looks like everything's looking quite nice he's got even gone with a little bit of range with the master throwers there yeah and skilling is all in the correct areas r25 thorin what can you say yeah i wouldn't want to bump into him he would wipe the floor with pretty much nearly every single command i own probably all of them okay here we go kieran okay rts mobile nice um a fellow youtuber here with an R5, um, Kierden at the moment, if we go in at level 45, uh, using all purple gear here, so probably going to be buffing a lot of men, deafness with commander speed, very interesting, um, with the full helm, um, I think this is more of, you could definitely, um, do a lot better, 
using a full stack of the heralds there. The skilling is um, pretty much good. It's yeah, very very good if you wanted to bump into a couple of certain commanders. Um, but yeah, um, round five. This has a really good chance of follow up and evading that. Like I think this one's really good at putting points in as well. But I think this is more of it's an R5. You just thrown it up. You would definitely have a lot better commanders. Um, but yeah, not a lot of high respect looking ones here. So it looks like he's not a very highly used commander in that sense. Okay, here we go. Now, Elra here, he's quite interesting. Uh, Findo Flynn we have here at R15. He does have his unique, which is really good. You can see it does attack buff for elves, defense for men and HP for dwarves, the Homeland Guardians. Um, which is really good, as you can see there. Different races gain the following effect. So, like, um, elves have a damage buff. Men have a damage reduction. And dwarves get madness immunity. Um, a mixed troop combination, which is very good there. Um, with a lot of range units there, which makes sense with that gearing. And, yeah, the skilling is looking very nice. He has a little bit of healing in that as well. Nice build there. I've seen some really good results from um, Elra here, as well as his brother, who's probably going to be coming up here in a moment. Okay. Bud Knight with Imrahil. Now, Imrahil looks great on paper, but he just never seems to perform, guys. Um, using Cutlass, Play to the Citadel, Swanhelm. Um, he's using all of the mounted units, which is very smart with his R5. But yeah, I don't know. He just never seems... To perform as you would see on paper, like it looks really good, like Stun of Madness mini and stuff like that. But yeah, I never see him performing amazingly, especially against evil guys. But yeah, quite interesting there for Imrahil. We're getting there, guys. We're getting there very close. All right, let's go over here. So we have Eladan. We have um, Balthazar here with an R18 Eladan as the highest. Um, rating at the moment. Okay, using Breacher of the Riddermark. Very interesting. Galleon Extra Might. We're using Warding. So using a full... Um, uh, okay, mounted um, build on this. Very interesting. With mounted supply on the reins. Um, and then the skilling is quite nice. Yeah, the physical damage makes sense. Yeah. Um, at R8... Quite good, I would say. Um, like obviously, it can be gear improvements, but I don't know what this guy could be. Only been playing for three or four seasons, so yeah, quite nice. All right, guys, we're getting there. Okay, the light. I was going to say I thought I might be seeing Neil here. Neil's is here at R17, but we have the light here with an R25. Kelleborn, um, very nice. We've got the open white knife. I'm surprised I'm not seeing his staff here. Tactical maneuvers, probably yes. Either going to see probably, um, okay, no, melee suppression makes sense with the damage reduction. Quite interesting here that he's put some rhinos in here. Because, yeah, that's going to help protect those other units. Quite an interesting troop combination. I like that. The skilling looks um, very much um, where it should be. Looks very nice. Very, very, very nice. And, yeah, critical care on this. Yep, makes sense. Yeah, can't go wrong with that gear. Gear, perfect. I'm very intrigued. I like how he's put, um, with non-roleplay, he's gone with some of the great beasts, or the rhinos, I like to call them. That's going to be very handy and take a lot of um, damage focus off these two. So, yeah, very nice there. All right, almost almost done, guys. Um, we have Balgin, who I remember I worked on this guy before. He's really good defense. We have an R16 here, guys. Oh, he does have his uh, special unit. Oh, sorry, not special unit. Special equipment here, the Hardly Buck, the Buckler, sorry, the Hardy Buckler, which is very interesting. This guy um, basically is just an absolute tank. It's interesting um, to see that he's using a lot of range on here as well. That's cool to see. But yeah, a very nice looking um, Falg in there, guys. He can be quite a tank, but I do find out if he bumps into someone like. The Witch King or something, he's going to get absolutely destroyed. Okay, Treebeard. Let's have a look, guys. The highest one we have here is a Mariner at the moment with R7. Now, he is hard to gear because a lot of gear doesn't work with him, but he has achieved 502 might with him. He's using the Warhammer. Um, he's using all a dwarf, a full dwarf build setup. Quite interesting here, guys. The massive breastplate. 
Um, probably going to be trying to do some madness there and then maybe mend. Yep, makes sense. Yeah, that um, he could be quite interesting there. Um, obviously, you could do a couple of different changes here. But yeah, quite interesting to see him with just a full um, dwarf build there. Quite strange. Yeah, I'd like to see how that would actually do in battle. Alright, moving on. We've got the last two. We have a seal door. We have a R18 a seal door up here. Oh, look, there I am. Make it, when I was R11, I'm nearly R14 now. So I might be able to do an update, a better one of this soon. So R18, okay, not using the unique, which means he's using a completely different troop combination. Looks like he's going with a high HP um, and damage route as well. Um, he's definitely using the R5 skill there because he's using men and elf units using uh, might of soldiers. Okay, quite interesting. Concentration, extra might, 364 might is quite nice. Discord to inflict madness makes complete and absolute sense. Uh, then he's going to be using tactical mark on that, makes sense. And he's going with the ring bearers um, route with stun and madness. So yeah, quite interesting there. And last but not least for the good side, guys, remember I will be doing evil next video as well. Every single evil commander as well, so stay tuned. But yeah, these videos are like 30 minutes long. Um, so we have Biron here with an R10. That's crazy to see him at R10 already at the moment. Level 45. Probably Frenzy on this. No, we have Giant's Power. Okay, makes sense though. Uh, with the Biorings, um, making very, very useful there. Um, you can use, so he's probably going with a Beast build here. Let's have a look. Preparation. Beast inflicting max damage. Yeah, so he's going with the Beast build and the R5 skilling. Let me go back into that. Massive Breastplate. Um, cask of pride and a little bit of recovery there, but the um, army HP buff as well Very nice. It's crazy to see someone has him at R10 already Well guys, that was quite crazy. Um, let me know if you like some of those commanders um, If you think you would make any change or anything like that in the comment section um, I will be doing all of the evil units as well guys while I'm still on bag end, I'm trying just to come up with some different content and that. But yeah, that was quite interesting to react and to check out all of those uh, commanders for the good side. We will be doing evil side, guys. So yeah, I'm going to wrap it up because this video is very long. And yeah, um, if you did watch it until the end, um, absolute legends. All right, until next time, guys. Peace out. EJ's out. And I'll catch you guys later. See yous. Yeah, you.